Okay, before I go into the watch list video for uh, Monday, July 24th, just going to say a few words about our free webinar on Thursday, July 27th, 7.30 Eastern Time. Um, I'm going to put a link to the in the description to this video so you can click the link to register. Uh, please register as soon as you can. We're hoping to have a big crowd and we're going to be talking about um, day trading for a living. Uh, I think it's going to be one of our best webinars yet. Definitely bring your questions, but um, as you can see in the graphic there, there's many, many ways to trade. Um, a lot of people to follow and try to learn from, and one of the keys to becoming consistently profitable day traders, finding your edge and deciding what type of trader you should be. So we're going to talk about that, and uh, I think we're going to give some insight into and also some uh, optimism for you guys to understand that it is doable. I'm gonna tell my story. Wayne's gonna tell his story. So um, it, it, we came from two different places, but we both ended up trading for a living. And I think it's gonna help you um, to realize that anyone can do it. Um, but we're gonna talk about what it takes, and I think it's gonna be fun, all right? So if you can, get registered. The link will be in the description to the video, all right? Uh, the registration link. Real quick, I'm gonna slide this back over. This was on uh, da, 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 July 19th, this is what my equity curve for 2017 looked like. Um, you know, I have a, I have one kind of blip back here in March, and then now I have another one in July. So the reason this is dated July 19th, and I also traded the 20th and 21st, they're not on here, is because if most of you know, I did an account reset. I took my account back to 30,000 because I caught myself um, two different days, one day here and one day here, um, getting away from what I do, what I know. And honestly, this sounds almost uh, arrogant, but I honestly think I was getting bored, uh, steady grinding gains every day. And I, I'm watching all these crazy moves and all these people uh, kind of gambling. And I think I was bored and just jumped on the gambling wagon. And I, I did that twice in July. And that is not like me at all. Um, my partner texted me and said, hey, you are not at all doing what you're good at. And, uh, and that was, I said, two bad days in July. And that, that's two days, two bad days too much for me. So anyway, so I did an account reset because sometimes the only way to reset yourself is to take your account back down. I took all the money out of my account except for 30,000 and starting, and that's what I do at the beginning of every year, by the way. January 1st, I start every year with 30,000. I'll bring this back over. Uh, I still had over 100,000 after this drawdown and that was starting with 30. Um, so, you know, I'm proud of that, but I went back to 30 to center myself. So my new equity curve, and remember these dots aren't, each dot is a new high for, um, for my, uh, in my account, my trading account from the date that I started. So this one you can see starts July 20th and 21st. This is only two days worth and the trade numbers. I've had 19 trades in two days. Each green dot is a new high for this time period, whatever it is, and this one starts on July 20th. And this, all my new equity curves are gonna start on July 20th because of that uh, account reset I did, and I had to do it, had to recenter myself. And you can see over the course of these 19 trades, I have one trade that wasn't a new green dot. So in other words, I've gone 18 for 19, and over the course of two days, um, I've been grinding it higher with each trade, with the exception of this one. Um, so that is me getting back to what I do, and I'm gonna talk a lot about that in the webinar on Thursday. All right, so let's go into the watch list for Monday. TEUM, again, I've talked about this. It's a weird chart. You had the huge move, kind of flagged, and then a gap up, but then tanked for three days, then gapped up again. Um, I, I, You know, you have two red days after the gap up. I, I think this thing is finding support, and I think it, it uh, I don't know, I think the, the bulls might take charge here. Um, after the gap up, you know, it hasn't taken out recent lows. I kind of feel like the next, next logical move is up, but we'll have to wait and see if it gives any kind of a setup. So there it is using 15-minute candles. See the huge move. You can see the very nice flag gapped up out of it. And this to me was oversold and I had it on watch and then it gapped up again. So, um, but a nice narrow range on Friday. So I think this is worth watching for a potential long on Monday. It obviously is not my favorite chart in the world, but yeah, I think it's worth watching. Pixie, P-I-X-Y, um, came public on June 30th. Uh, did pretty well, right? From, uh, from $6 and something to over eleven fifty, And then what? five, six days in a row, just straight down. Let's see, the all-time low was uh, below 6.30. It actually went to 6.26. And I was wanting this to hit new lows for the year um, on this sell-off. So I think we might catch a nice bounce this week. So let's watch that one for a good setup. 
Sears Holdings, SHLD, gapped up on news of selling Kenmore appliances on Amazon. Um, after the gap up, two solid days right back down, uh, almost filled the gap. Um, I think it might be ready to turn back up after that news. We'll see. Again, I'm a day trader, never hold overnight. I can't believe I have dry ships on watch, but I do. Um, the daily chart means nothing. You can't tell anything from it. But when I go to five minutes, and this was after a reverse split, right, on Friday, had this crazy upside move on, um, on Friday. Unfortunately, it kept halting. Uh, those volatility halts are just plumb stupid. But uh, with this kind of move from basically a dollar forty to almost uh, to almost four to three eighty four, um, this one now I think dry ships is back in play, and I absolutely want to watch it for a low risk setup for a potential long. Again, I'm not an investor. I just mean for a trade on Monday, um, and it should be on watch all week. After that kind of a move, um, I think dry ships is going to be a good trader for a few days. AEZS monster move red day on Friday. I, I always want to see these things come you know back down closer to the moving averages, but uh, sometimes they can surprise you like it did the day after this monster move, gapped up and had another monster move, and then actually gapped up the next day. Um, so this is one you want to have on a chart, but it, just know that it's extended right now. I'll probably watch it all week. Plug had a nice gap up on uh, on Friday, sold off, but then almost came back to its opening price. So I think that one's worth watching. CAPR, decent daily chart here. You had this monster volume, and really it's just kind of flagging. I want to watch out for a potential long. TEAR, um, huge move on Friday. Um, I did catch one trade in this on Friday. Uh, it's certainly worth watching. I'll show you. We had uh, Michael H.A. in our chat room called this at 225 right here. I think he was the first one to give a trade idea. Um, I didn't actually call it when, when it came back up to the highs and then was flagging. I called it over uh, 345, which happened right here, 346. It went quickly to 363, plenty of volume. Um, I made a, like just a few hundred on it, but man, could have had some other nice trades. Um, we had a couple other ideas in the chat room too. My point now is it closed so strong that uh, you've got to watch this one all week. All right, that's T-E-A-R. I-P-W-R, this one's interesting to me. A uh, big volume spike and closing at its highs on Friday. Um, had good news. I think we might get a continuation day out of that one. Certainly worth watching. MBRX. A couple days where it's found support after the gap up. Potential long setup. And then lastly, APHB. I've been watching this one for a few days. Um, actually for a couple weeks. But I like this pop back here that took it to $1.20. You had a lower high here to $1.09. And then since then it hit $1.10 three days in a row. So this thing over a dollar ten could just uh, rip, maybe take out this dollar twenty, and then be off to the races. So I definitely want to watch this one. I hope to find some uh, gappers in the pre-market on Monday to add to this list as well. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see everybody on Monday.